Hey folks and welcome to Hank's True Barbecue. Now looking back on my videos I realized I cooked quite a bit of meat so I figured I'll do something different today. We're gonna do veggie style butternut pumpkin. Uh, we're gonna grill it caveman style but also I'm gonna show you how to weave and layer flavor upon flavor to build a complete dish. So this is gonna be interesting so stick around. <music> Okay, so cooking caveman style means we're gonna put the food directly into the glowing embers. I'm gonna get a good fire going, we're gonna go relatively hot today. We're gonna utilize the fact that the butternut has a tough outer shell but soft in the middle. So the outside is gonna get real charred, almost black. Uh, but again, we're not gonna eat the shell, we're just gonna eat the meat on the inside. So once it's done, we're gonna cut it open. And we're going to add a ton of flavor with some interesting ingredients I picked. Uh, so I think you're going to like this one. It's going to look good on the plate color wise, but also, like I said, we're going to weave those flavors in. I have a few interesting combinations I want to show you. So first off though, this is easy prep wise. I mean, this is done already. No trimming, no nothing. So we're just going to get the fire started, get a good fire going, uh, relatively hot and uh, get this one properly charred and cooked up. So let's step outside. So I'm cooking on the big green egg today. Uh, it's great because we're gonna use the grill as an oven and this is a great match, but it works just as well with the Weber kettle or if you have the, you can cook in the firebox on your offset smoker. So it doesn't matter much. I'm just gonna mention a few words about the charcoal I'm using. So let's take a look at what I've fill this one with it's charcoal from ashwood now i chose ashwood because i know it burns really cleanly in very large fractions which helps i think when you're cooking directly in the glowing embers if you have larger pieces there's less that's going to stick to your food depending on whether that's meat or veggies doesn't matter much but i really like this whatever you get make sure you get top quality charcoal Another thing about this is lighting procedure. Uh, normally I just light one like that because usually I do low and slow and it's really, I would say imperative to just light it in one spot so the temp doesn't run away on you because the startup procedure is key. But now we're going to go a bit hotter so I'm gonna drop in two to get this fire going relatively quickly. I'm gonna cook at higher temps around 180 Celsius. Yeah, so I'm going to leave the top vent and the bottom vent fully open until this one gets up to speed. So I'm going to close the lid now, still with the vents fully open to let this one warm up properly. The grill is coming up to temp. I have the top vent fully open still because I want this to get hot. But at the same time, as soon as I place this butternut pumpkin in here, it's going to cool off a bit. But we're just going to set it like that. We're going to have to check back in 20 minutes and turn it and turn it so it gets evenly cooked. But this is how we roll. As for the top vent, the bottom vent is fully open. This one, I used to have it like that, but five minutes after putting the pumpkin in, I should close it like this because it still runs pretty hot anyway. So I think this is good setting on my grill, but check on yours. The nice thing about this cook is I'm not using temperatures really or thermometers. I'm just gonna wing it, but you can see the amount of glowing embers I have. So I think that's a good indication, but it all depends on type of grill, size of the grill, etc. So this is what works for me on this cook. Now as for the flavors, I mentioned I was gonna use a few fun ingredients. The first one is Sumac. Sumac is from tiny red berries that have been dried and, and then into the grinder. I think this is really good. It's like a Middle Eastern type spice. Very lemony, extremely lemony tang to it. So it, I think this is great. If you can't find it, I guess you could substitute with lemon pepper, for example. But this is going to go really well for the butternut. As for some saltiness and just a bit of creaminess, I have some uh, feta cheese that I just crumbled up. Uh, we're gonna add just a hint of maple syrup and of course pistachios to tie the nutty flavor of the butternut together with the pistachio flavor. This is really good. Now I just chopped these roughly once or twice. You don't want to turn it into breadcrumbs, but go over it once with a knife and we're done. So 
All, with, all this together with the butternut is gonna turn into a really good dish with nice flavors and different layers of both texture. Texture from this one is also with the saltiness from the cheese, the lemony tang from the sumac and just a hint of sweetness. This is gonna be a nice one. Now the butternut has been on for 15 minutes, a little more. So I think it's about time to turn it. How to do that? Well, get a good pair of gloves, pick it up, rotate it. There you go. We'll do this another 15, and then we'll flip it a third time, and then we'll check. So another 15 minutes have passed. We're gonna do the third and final rotation, and then we should be good. It's coming along nicely. This is looking good. See, we're not gonna eat this anyway, so utilizing the shell in a good way to cook this one. All right. 45 minutes have passed. This one has been on for like three times, 15 minutes. So I turned it in between every, so now it's starting to feel really good. Look good also. It's time to bring this one in. Nice, relatively quick cook. And now we can shut this one down and reuse the charcoal for another cook. So we are, here we have the butternut. Now, how do you know if it's done? Well, you can always use this one and stick through and feel the, how much resistance you get. But this has been on for 45 minutes, so I would say it's plenty tender. So this is good. Now, again, we're not gonna eat that outside. So I'm just gonna cut through all the way. And just like with, if I cook it from raw, like I'm gonna remove the bits. Should have brought the gloves in with me. This is looking good, great color. I love that orange, just like with sweet potatoes. Check that out, beautiful. Now we're gonna flavor this thing. But before we do that, I'm gonna remove the pits. That's easy to do with a spoon like that. See, we get everything out, looking good. Before we serve it, I'm gonna slice it up, kind of like, it's gonna be a rustic serving, but I like that, kind of like a sharing platter. Just gonna cut these ends off, very thin. And now we're gonna kind of slice it into, well, I was gonna say not bite size, but so you can grab a piece without getting the whole button up on your fork. This feels just right in terms of tenderness. Nice one. Trying to work out a nice way of serving this and also getting all the flavors in there. All right, I think that's good. First flavor to go on is the sumac. I think this is a really fresh herb. I'm gonna lay on quite a bit because it has a nice lemony tang like I mentioned earlier and gives it that bit darker red color that should be good and we get some of the feta cheese like this that this type of serving really appeals to me you can really tell this has been on the grill beautiful and the colors are nice, and like I mentioned, the flavors. I'm gonna go add quite a bit of feta cheese. That's looking good. And the pistachios. The pistachios, of course, tie in well with the nutty flavor of the butternut, but also adds a bit of crunch. So this is for texture. that beautiful and finally to tie it all together some maple syrup now go lightly on this one i'm going to put my finger here so just get a light drizzle don't want to go overly sweet because there is quite a bit of sweetness in the butternut so i'm just going to drizzle on like this if somebody else wants a bit more you can just put this on the table so they can help themselves i think that's looking good perfect See if you can just cut in here and get me some butternut pumpkin. Mm. 
great flavor. I like this. Just the perfect doneness. Nice finger food. And you have the nuts and the feta cheese saltiness. It's really good. Actually, I think I'm gonna add just a bit more sweetness. Needs that to balance up the feta cheese. But this is an easy cook. As you can see overall, fun way of serving a butternut. Really colorful, looks good. Mm, good stuff. This is a nice serving platter. Share before, like a starter before the main course. I think cooking vegetables like this is a fun way of cooking, playing with fire and getting that nice charred surface that also acts as a shell, if you like, to protect the the butternut meat. Uh, and the good thing about this, like flavor wise, is we have the butternut, it's gonna turn sweet, just a bit nutty, which ties very well into the pistachios we use. Also, again, for that layering, uh, I really wanted not just sweetness, but all uh, nuttiness, but also a bit of saltiness. Now that ties very well into the uh, feta cheese we use. And of course the lemony tang from the sumac. So all in all, it just builds layer upon layer to turn that into a complete nice sharing platter, which I think is just, it looks good and it tastes really great. So that's nice. And just to top it off, uh, just a bit of sweetness. Now I didn't just go with brown sugar or, well, I could use honey, but I wanted something with just a bit more depth in the sweetness. So that's why I used the maple syrup. But again, very light drizzle. Otherwise the sweetness takes over and it all goes flat. I hope this was something you could use, uh, perhaps inspirational, go out and try some more caveman style grilling, whether you do that with meats or vegetables, doesn't matter much, but it's a good and fun way to cook. I hope you enjoyed this. If you want to see more, like the combination or building a plate, just let me know, drop a comment down below, uh, much appreciated. And thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next episode.